TNTM The Show presents Comicast 349 with your host, Pablo Gunner. I'm here to talk nerdy to you about this week's comics, which is August 1st comics. So I'm going to get into this. Comic books by Skim Pass. That's it's, They fit into one of those categories. But mostly you'll hear strong by because that's how great all these books are. I get the best of the best, unless they're new, unless they're like number ones or number twos, or like a new story arc, something like that, new creative team jumping on, then that's why it'll be a different number usually. But So that's why you'll mostly hear strong buy. And those strong buys, they're also usually contenders for, you'll hear me say this is contender for runner-up and or back and bag of the week, which is best book of the week, okay? And of course, there's a runner-up to the best book of the week. Uh, so there's also the week. There's a week buy. Doesn't happen too often, but you get the week buy when you have a book that you just you're like, uh, it's solid. But you know, if I have a lot of cash, sure I'll go ahead and get it. But I don't have to have it. Then there's skim. You know, and it's like you just skim it. Now you also have a strong skim, which is I strongly suggest you skim this book because you may or may not like it based on that skimming of the book. You'll either really like the art or you'll really like the dialogue or some of the story. So I strongly suggest you skim it before you decide, hey, I'm not going to get this. Then there's just, like I said, just the skim. And then there's the weak skim, which is, you know, unless you really have a lot of time on your hands, don't skim this. Okay. And then passes pass. That's when like it's just a waste of time and it's a waste of money. Don't bother with it at all. Okay. And that's pretty much it. I do have a timer that is a minute. I tr I'll do that to keep me on track so that I know when it's time to shut up. I'll try to do these reviews faster than that, but I am a little slow up here. So that's why I'll probably be longer than that, you know. So, yeah, um, and that's uh, that's 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 pretty much it for the stuff. Cool. So that's uh, that's what's been that's what's gonna be going on um, for this. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Commercial break about halfway through. Spoiler alert, because I'm gonna spoil these at least minorly, if not more. At the end is probably when I'll announce my back and bag and runner up, unless I know it's my back and bag when I review it, then I'll say it right away. But usually not. I like to keep the suspense. And then I might keep an, uh, a code until the end. Speaking of, I do have Amazing Spider Man, the newest Amazing Spider Man 2. I, it's, it came out last week. That's why I'm not going to give it away this week. But I say, I'm say i saying I have this code. So if you retweet this podcast and I have that amongst other books and you retweet it, I'll probably ask you, what do you want? And then if you tell me what you want and all these books are gone, then your options are older books. But they're still good books. So... Or if you want, you can even request like reserve a book for the upcoming week or something like that even so that, you know, then those books are taken or whatever. But anyways, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and jump into this, okay? I don't want to take too much time. I'm going to start with The Seeds. Actually, no, I don't want to start with Seeds. I'm going to start with Weapon Lost, number four. It's Hunt for Wolverine. Charles Soule is the writer. Matteo Bufani is the artist. Jim Charlempidis is color artist. Joe Sabino is the letterer. And so this one, they go back to an, a, an, a lead that they had considered as erroneous, but then there's an explosion. So they're like, obviously it wasn't erroneous, you know? So then they find out like, okay, where does this guy work? And so they go look into that. That place is purging all their files. And they're like, we got to stop this. So they get some information. They find a video of Wolverine. And it seems like he's working for these people. And they seem like bad people. So they're like, this is what we have. We're going to take it to Kitty Pride. We're going to figure out what's going on. And that is that. It looks great. It's really interesting. I'm interested to see what comes of this. Because it seems like it had one more issue in it. But what's next is Hunt for Wolverine Dead Ends, number one. And that's where we're going to come up with all the fact-finding stuff. That'll be cool because since I didn't read the other books, then I'll get to know all the facts from those other books. So that's cool. 
So, but this one I really enjoyed. It was nice. Uh, like I said, it was weird because I felt like it could have gone another issue, which is that Dead Ends one. So that's kind of going to like a compilation of all these different team books, sort of, or whatever. So, but anyways, I enjoyed it. It was nice. Uh, I would say that, you know, it, it's, it's really solid writing and it's really solid art. You know, it's top notch, but it didn't blow me away. So I can give it a buy. I can also give away the digital code. Here's a digital code. C for Claymore, E for Echo, B for Bones, Zero, B for Bones, T for Tomahawk, F for Famicom, T for Tomahawk, E for Echo, V for Vector, C for Cable, U for Ugly. All right, and then I'm going to jump into some DC with Green Lanterns number 52. It is... Dan Jurgens is writing this, and then we have Santucci and then Hi-Fi and Colors. So it's just kind of, yeah, Marco Santucci. Um, yeah, so it's just more of that Corrupted Ring stuff. Wonky stuff is happening. Um, what's his name? Uh, Simon is getting different messages than the rest of the crew is. Like the rest of the crew is giving their orders, and they're all together. And then Simon hears something else, so he goes and does what the ring tells him. And the ring tells them something. And stuff. So, like, there's a lot of confusion going on, and they're like, "Yeah, Simon is the one that killed this person. He's the he's the mole." And Jessica's like, "You guys are ridiculous. Like, you guys thought I was a bad guy, in, like last in the last issue. So, what the f? Like, get your stuff together." So, it's really you think they would be like somebody's messing with us because they're messing with the weather too on Mogo and all kinds of other things going on. So. There's a lot of crazy weird stuff going on. It's kind of jumbled. It, this is kind of hard to follow because of the fact that it's been building up to this. So if you just get it on its own, you're like, and especially because there's two different Lanterns books, there's Hal Jordan and the Green Lanterns, and then there's this one, and then they are kind of similar. So it's very hard to keep them straight. So you're like, did that happen? And what? No. So yeah, it looks pretty solid. And, you know, it's, I don't know, it's, 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 it's not bad. It's all right. Uh, this is another one. It's, uh, this one, I don't know. Uh, this one specifically, I'm going to have to give this one a week by, a week by on this issue alone. Okay. That's what I'm going to give it. On to Cosmic Ghost Rider number two. It's Donny Cates as a writer, Dylan Bernay. As the artist, Antonio Fabella as the colorist, Clayton Cowles as a letterer. And you have this uh, Frank Castle, Punisher, Ghost Rider. He's on this planet in this bar. He's drinking. He has baby Thanos there. They're getting mad at him because he has a kid. He has a baby there. And they're like, you can't drink. And he's like, your planet's going to die anyway. So then they start attacking him. Then Galactus shows up. Then he's there to talk to Galactus. And he's like, oh, why are you doing this so I can kill this kid? And he's like, all right, you know what? You just want to kill this kid, so I'm going to get out of here. Uh, and then even like Uatu shows up, and they're like, you can't change his fate and stuff. And he's like, oh, I will change his fate and stuff. Like, I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that challenge, you know. So, yeah, so that's uh, that's what happens. And he just – and then these other people show up, Guardians of the Gal Galaxy, these weird Guardians of the Galaxy. It looks really solid. It looks really great. It does confuse me though because, like, I don't know. He, he doesn't exact. He doesn't really act like anybody. Like, he doesn't act like Frank Castle, but he doesn't act like Deadpool. I mean, he's not Deadpool. He's Frank Castle, but he doesn't really act like Frank Castle. He doesn't even act like a Frank Castle that's gone crazy. I don't know. He acts weird. I don't know how to put a put a peg on it in it. I don't know. So. It's just the, the, the it's just weird, and I've kind of felt like he made that proclamation in the first issue. So why did he have to with his actions? So why did he have to say it in this? I don't know. The other one, the next one, looks interesting because of who this weird Guardians of the Galaxy team is. Uh, but this one was okay. This is another one where I'm just like, uh, it's not bad. It looks great. I just didn't really have much for me. Like, I love Baby Thanos the most because he just wants to murder everything. He's an adorable little killer. 
But like, there's good moments, but overall, I'm just like, it's all right. Like, I this is another one. I feel like I'm being a little harsh this this time around, but I don't really. I'm probably more accurate to be honest. I'm gonna give this one a week by. All right, here's digital code seven J for Jones Q for Quentin F for Frank P for Payne I for Icarus M for Milton zero one W for Wesker P for Payne H for Hank. I'm going to do another DC book, okay? And this one's going to be a DC book that's fun. I don't know. It's Nightwing number 47. Got to love that dick. Uh, we have Benjamin Percy as the writer, and then we have uh, Mooneyham as the main artist. Klaus Janssen as inks. Velardi as, uh, yeah, Chris Mooneyham as the artist. Klaus Janssen as inks. Nick Velardi as colors. And Carlos Emanuel as letters. Did I say letters for Nick Velarde? I just meant colors. Anyways, anywho. So, yeah, this one, he's fighting these weird, like, gray clone thingies, electric dummy deals. Uh, and then there's this female Russian mafia, I think. And then they attack this robot thing. But they all have this gadget that they gave away for free. Not them, but that's that, that this tech person gave away for free or company gave away free. So it hacks them and like makes them believe all this horrible thing is hap stuff is happening to them. But it's not actually happening to them. They just need to take the thing off and they'll be fine. Barbara's actually there, and so she's there to help. And then she and then her and Dick team up and they find this guy who has been played by all of them, and they get a hold of him and stuff. And uh, that's mostly it for the most part. Um, it's, but uh, somebody, so, yeah, somebody gets sucked into this universe or whatever. It's, it's okay. It's, uh, the art, I don't know, the art looked way, 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 way too much like John Romero Jr. Like, this guy looks like John Romero Jr. Like, when he was probably better, uh, well, he definitely was better. But not as bet at his best. It looked way too much like Romita's art to the point where I was like, I was I was like, I swear this is Romita's art because I don't really like it that much in this issue. Like it's been great the rest of the issues, and this one just felt kind of weak. Uh, so that being said, story a little weak, writing a little weak. This is another book. Uh, I really want to be like, yeah, it's really really because I love my dick, uh, and I gotta get it. So for me, it's a weak buy, but I think it's probably. A strong skim for most. Alrighty. Moving on to Ant-Man and the Wasp, number four. It is still Mark Waid as the writer. Javier Garron as the artist. Israel Silva as color artist. Jo Caramagna as the letter. And yeah, so now Scott is seeing everything in like just white, like kind of like these negative colors, right? Um, just like bright whites and stuff. And then they're seeing, I think they're, but they are seeing him that way. So that the negative, all that stuff is all messed up. And they're like, oh, we just need to have contact. And then it fixes it. Uh, but then, and then they think they're in the real world and everyone, but it's this messed up world where like Scott Lang is like this big hero and everybody loves him. And then it's essentially like, yeah, oh, their dreams come true type of thing, except for this weird alien creature and this weird alien creature well not alien creature but microbe uh creature to them comes with them and everyone's being all grossed out by it and he's like well you know what i'll stay here as long as this thing makes my dreams come true whereas you know you guys can get out of here and then when they get out they're like nope we don't split the group and stuff and and yeah and it's just and then it i don't know it just it continues to get like more confusing and weirder but in a great way, it's almost too much. It's almost too much. I feel like if they keep on pushing this boundary in the next issue and they don't pull it back a little bit, you're going to lose me. You're going to start to lose me. or Because I feel like the start was in this issue and you'll lose me in the next one if you don't rein it in. Because I really need, I really need to be brought back down, brought into the real world a little bit. You know, because like this is fun. 
But now it feels like a side quest. It doesn't feel like main mission type stuff, you know. So I want to get back to the main mission, to the main objective. I'm very, I'm very you know, focused. Got to be focused. Anyways, so it looks phenomenal. Like I said, almost it's almost going off the rails, but not quite yet. Um, and it probably did go off the rails, but but it's still enjoyable at this point. The ending is where it goes like, what? So we'll see in the next one, really. But for this one, it was fun. It was enjoyable. It was interesting. It was solid. Uh, I can give this one. I I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a buy. I'm gonna give this one a buy. Okay. Here's the digital code. Tell me what you think. F for Familia, C for Carlos, and for Marcos, R for Rigoberto, A2, and for Marcos, B for Barrio, V for Villanueva, A for Alamos, 6, B for Barrio. Boom. Cool. And I'm going to do another DC book with Batman number 52. It is still Tom King. We have Lee Weeks as the artist, and then Betty Breitweisa as colors. This is continuing that trial of i want to say iceman all the time mr freeze killing these three women because in their brains there the temperature was lowered and now bruce wayne brings up the idea of what if somebody came in after the coroners did their stuff and they made the temperature colder so that when batman showed up he thought the coroner missed it but they didn't actually miss it so that he would go after mr freeze and mr freeze got the tip off that batman was coming for him because he was tipped off so he knows the person that set that up also told freeze and so freeze is now already like oh crap he's coming for me i'm gonna get ready he's breaking his parole by getting in his suit and everything like that but he's gonna do what he's got to do because batman's gonna come whoop his butt so that's why he came. That's why he was already prepared when he showed up because he knew but Ben's gonna whip his butt whether he's in a suit or not. You know, at least give himself a chance. And he's like, he's like, it doesn't matter if I'm in a suit or not. He's gonna beat the hell out of me every end, every fight ends in. I mean, every thing, every time it ends up in a fight. You know, with Freeze getting knocked out. So Bruce Wayne is now placing this doubt because he is Batman, and they leave this teaser. Anyways, it's time for me to shut up. So. I liked it. It was really great. This is just smart writing. It makes me forget about all of the Catwoman Batman stuff. And yet it affects this. Like he's being this way because of that. So that's interesting. That's an interesting thing to think about and take into consideration. So this one I can definitely give a strong buy and a contender to because it looks phenomenal, well written. Cool. Now, I am going to get into another Marvel book, which is The Death of the Inhumans, number two. It is Donny Cates is the writer, artist Ariel Olivetti, color artist Jordi Belair, Clayton Cowles is a letter. And so this one you have Black Bull, and he's writing down the names of all the people that, have, that were killed, that were, you know, in this attack on New Arctalan, or just Arctalan, I don't know. And so... And it's the Cree, and the Cree want them to give up. So he sends, um, he sends an emissary or something like that, uh, the guy that can Karnak. He sends Karnak, and Karnak's like, yeah, uh, you know, he's he's not gonna give up. You know, you you want your answer? His answer is no. His answer is he'd rather die than give up. You know, so they mess up Karnak, and then Black Bolt shows up, and he messes them up. And then they're like, oh, you're here to, you know, um, to make good on your promise. So, and they mess him up. And it is crazy. I was like, I I was like, ah, oh, no, but like, awesome. Like, I, I love the, that they're shaking the universe. You know, they're shaking it. The, the, the universe of comics, of Marvel comics, of the Inhumans. You know, because I wouldn't say they've been playing it safe. They've been playing it pretty risky for a while. But you got to keep it on those, on a constant time. You know, you constantly keep it on the rocks because then people are like, oh, nobody's going to die. Nobody means going to die. You know, that's fine. Uh, I may have given away too much. Anyways, strong buy. Contender loved it. Looks phenomenal. Really interesting. Well written. Crazy. Great. 
Uh, here's a digital code anyways. I kind of want to keep keep this one, but I'll give it away anyways. 7H for Hector, 3-2, P for Pietro, 3-0, F for Frank, Z for Zarbon, N for Nova, H for Hector, K for Kill. Let's see. Now we have green arrow number 43, and this one is uh, J. Benson and S. Benson. Uh, Julie and Shauna Benson teaming up on this one. And then uh, Fernandez as the artist and John Calis as colors, I want to say. Uh, yeah, uh, Javier Fernandez, if you're wondering which Fernandez it was. So, yeah, we have Roy and... Ollie and they are actually working together. And of course, Ollie is like, hey man, play it my way because he wants this Roy wants to take out this this guy that's about to blow up this building that still has people that refuse to leave. And they want to blow it up and they want to build better housing, um, more expensive housing. You know? And so they get those people out right as the explosion goes off, and they're like, We're gonna go after this guy. You know, Ollie has issues because his his place is getting all these lawsuits because of all the electronics that exploded from when the evil guy had taken over the company. He has this new thing with Black Canary going on. Uh, they have their base. They, you know, he meets back up, back up with Roy, and Roy's like, "Hey, man, I gotta go. You know, I gotta take care of some stuff." Um, uh, but yeah, anyways, the main thing is there. There's this guy that's like, "Hey, uh, it's like a public. It's 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 a social media thing," and he's like, "Should we kill this guy?" Or should we let him go free? And it's that dude that tried to kill the people or that gave him the order to turn off, the, you know, to set off the bombs, the guy that, that meet mogul or whatever. And so uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. They try to stop him. And then the next person that's on the list is somebody else. But yeah, it's really cool. It's really interesting. It looks really great. It's really interesting. It was actually a really solid issue. I like Roy in the issues. I like how it's kind of like a constant, not constant, but it's, there's a rotating squad. Yes, there's main people, but you have, you know, Red Arrow, and then you have the, the girl, and then you have his sister, Amiko, and then you have Roy Harper, Arsenal, you know, like they kind of jump in and out and stuff, as well as other people like Diggle, uh, you know, and Fife and stuff like, so it's cool. And then this was just Black Canary. So it was great. It was like, it was well-written. Like I said, looks great. Phenomenal. Strong buy. I would even say contender. All righty. I'm going to get into Star Wars number 52. It's Karen Gillen is the writer. Salvador LaRocca is the artist. Guru EFX is colorist. Clayton Cowles is letter. And this one is, man, this thing just gets more and more intense. You have Han Solo, and he's being chased by Darth Vader. And he's like, man, this guy, we can't shake him. What are we going to do? And they're like, we're trying to go to the... They're like, you know, we have a plan. We're going to shoot 3PO out of one of the pod, escape pods, and he's going to go into – so he can pass on this message that if they fly at the at the doors, they're automatically going to open. It's just like a um, – it's a thing. So that's – so then they – they that's that's what they – it's super intense. It's really awesome, you know, just seeing Han do his thing against Vader pretty much. You know, the, the revenge of Vader because of, yeah, it's just so good. It's so intense. I can't wait to read the next issue. It's been so intense. It's been so bleak. This is perfectly timed. This is how you do comics. It's like, oh, my God, when it's looking the worst, you have to give a little hope. And they give that hope. And you're like, you don't know how it's going to turn out next. It could turn out still bad. But at least we got a little hope, okay? They put a little hope in our cup. And that's what I like. That's what I love. Star Wars is great. So, yeah, and this is well-written. Strong by contender without a doubt. Here it is. I'll give the digital code away anyways. Here it is. F for Falcon. C for Cable. M for Millennium. 4. J for Jason. Z for Zabrak. U for Ugnot. H for Helmet. N for Nova. C for Cable. W for want or a wedge i should say right and then r for revin so let's see let's get another dc book in here okay and i'm gonna do justice league number five this is what this one says james tenio in the fourth but i thought it was scott schneider doing it 
uh, Doug Mankey and then uh, Mendoza and Will Quintana on art. But this is primarily a Doom focused issue. So in fact, on the front cover, it scratches out Justice League and puts Legion of Doom on this. So you can't, it's hard to be confused as what you're reading because it is a Doom issue. And that's that's why I love covers that are indicative of what the issue is about and when you're not tricking me. And so it shows you like the kind of like the origin story of the Legion of Doom where uh, what Luthor time travels, he time travels like to the end of time sort of and people finally realize to give in to like their worst desires or whatever and now they're all villains or whatever and stuff and so then he goes back in time and he's like all right hey he goes to sinestro he goes to grod he tells them you know all this stuff like hey i have the perfect plan that's gonna help us you know and it's partially due to his dad and and you see the 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 building and everything it's awesome it looks phenomenal it's really great it's awesome to get this backstory i love this What's cool as hell is that Batman, nobody sees this coming because they're like, Lester, there's been a good guy lately. And this is when Luthor realizes, like, hey, being bad is the better way, sort of, you know, in, in a way to, and yeah. So you got to read it. It is great. It's so good. It's always a strong buy. It's always, it's so solid. Strong buy contender for sure. All righty. Let's do some other stuff with X-Men Gold number 33, huh? Which is writer Mark Guggenheim, artist Michel Bandini, and then colorist Eric Arciniaga, letter is Corey Petit. And this one is a storm issue. It's her mom, her adopted mom from the tribe that, that you know, was worshiping her as a god, worshiping Storm as a god. Her mom, like, is being attacked and stuff by the new religion group, and she prays, and that's what kind of gets Stormbreaker, you know, answers that prayer for her. And so, and then they also go over um, Prestige, and she's like, I, I, you know, I feel great, but, you know, I, I, I feel like maybe I should take a break, you know, and she takes a break with Kurt, and it breaks my heart because she's breaking his heart, and I love Kurt. Kurt's my favorite. And then it gets back to Storm. Storm finds out about what happened to her mom, goes back, finds out about this new religion, and there is a guy there, and he's the physical embodiment of this, of this, of evil or whatever is the is the African translation and stuff. And somehow there's some other stuff going on. She wants to find out how and why and stuff like that. So really cool, really interesting. I like it. Looks really good, well written. Um I like it. Yeah, it's good stuff. I'm interested. I'm definitely interested to see what's what's to come. So that's always great is there's a little stuff, you know, from before. There's new stuff planted. And then there's stuff for like, hey, what's coming next? And that's how you do an issue. That's how you do an issue well. So this reads well in issues quite well, astonishingly. So I would give Ekman gold, gold standards, strong buy, contender. Here's a digital code. Two, A for Apocalypse, G for Gorgon, D for Decathon, E for Echo, 5, 8, Z for Zarbon, 1, C for Cable, 9, S for Storm. And I am going to get into another book. Uh, let's see. What else do I have? I thought I had another, I thought I had something else. Um, but I can't find it. So I'm just going to roll right into, uh, commercial break time to, uh, talk about one of our sponsors, which is going to be gamers anonymous and gamers anonymous is a retro gaming shop primarily, but they do have new stuff too, which is really great. In fact, I need to swing by because I know, and they'll take, They'll take that stuff, you know, they'll take your uh, orders. Like if they get enough orders, they will order the new game. So I would strongly suggest going there if there's a game that you want to order. I should have done that with Kirby All-Star Allies or or whatever it was, the new one. So, um, but yeah, so they're a great place. Like I said, it's not just, it's not just retro gaming, but they focus on retro gaming and stuff. They're located at 3700 Osuna road uh northeast it's suite five 
513. Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87109. And you can call them to reserve games. Now, they don't really, it's not really a reservation, but like if there's a game that you want and that you're really looking for and you can't find it and they don't have it there because they get trade-ins a lot, they'll put you on a list so that when that game gets there, they'll text you. Now there's other people on that list, so it's a first come first serve basis. So you have to be the first there. So call them to be put on that list at 505-884-1776, okay? You can also go to their website, which is ageofcomics.store. Why am I saying Age of Comics and I gave the wrong address to, um, I'm an idiot. I am sorry about this. I am a fool. My apologies. So, yeah, that is uh, that is not what I'm doing here. But it doesn't show the address. But their number is 505-332-0717. I'm a mess. I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, their website is garetro.com. But it's really great because they do a lot of stuff. They have a lot of gaming stuff going on. You know, they have um, contests going on, you know, like smash contests as well as other, you know, fighting games, I, and stuff like that. So definitely check it out, join their community group, join their, get on their Facebook, give them a like, follow them. They give all the updates. They have the calendar for the whole month. They update it constantly and stuff like that. Now it's usually open from 10 to eight. Uh, so 10 AM to 8 PM. So yeah, it's a really great guy that runs it. He's a saint. He's not fantastic human being and wonderful person. And uh, so that's another reason they and they have cats that you. There's a cat that you can adopt there if you want. You don't have to. You know, it's just a thing that they do. They kind of like foster it until somebody that likes it adopts it. I've done it before, and it was the best cat I've ever had. Anyways, yeah. So make sure you give them that like and everything like that, and check them out. They're a great store. And they're good people over there, and I love BSing with them. Totally worth it. Cool. So now let's get back to books. I'm going to get into the seeds number one. And the reason I picked it up is because it is by Anne Nocenti and David Aja or Aha. And yeah. And so I, I, to be honest, I skimmed it first and the art was like, oh, it's black and white. You know, it's gray tones. And so I was like, it looks okay. But then I was like, I know this is a great team here. So I read it, and then even the beginning, it's kind of like weird, like the first page. Anyways, it ends up being about like these two different zones. It's kind of like, I don't know if it has anything to do with the Trump wall or whatever, or the border wall, you know, but they're talking about this wall, how on one side it's, it's you know, you can't have an electronics, and supposedly it's so great, and then on the other side it's like trashy on their side, right? And so, and then you have like these weird people that wear masks, and you don't know why. One of them gets with this chick... And it's very realistic, you know, um, they're cause yeah. And so it's interesting. And then you, there's this lady cause she's actually making a story about the different sides and stuff. And then discovers that there's like an alien going on other. Uh, there's an alien here somewhere. She gets a picture of him and everything like that. And that's a big story. Cause they actually wanted to look into the story of this drug or there's this club where you can go and it shows you your death and stuff. Uh, but she doesn't really care because she's like, I don't care. But she has a she has a horrible editor, like horrible as in horrible person kind of. I don't know if she's actually a bad person, but she she just makes lies essentially like fake news and then until it becomes true type thing. It's interesting. I would definitely was like, I'm interested. I am interested. So this one, uh, I can really solid. It was really well written. It looks really good. Uh, certain things I felt like they didn't really need to be in there. You know, like, I don't know, just like certain images or whatever. Like it just seemed like filler kind of, but, and maybe it was, I don't know. But so, but I still feel like it's, I'm interested. I'm down for an issue too. So I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it a strong buy. Next is Captain America number two, and it is Tanahisi Coates with uh, Lionel Francis Yu. Tanahisi Coates is, is the main is the main uh, writer. He's he's the writer, and then Lionel Francis Yu is the main main artist. Uh, we have Gary Alanguilan uh, and Lionel Francis Yu as inkers, and then Sonny Go is the artist, color artist. Letter is Joe Caramagna. 
So this one, I don't know. This one kind of felt like a repeat of the first issue, sort of. You see more nuke. You see more of Cap trying to take down these nukes. You see more of people just telling him, dude, we already told you to lay off. Lay off. Like, we don't need your help. We don't want your help. We don't want you in the spotlight. You know, get out of it. You know, General Ross shows up to do him. He blows off some steam, you know. It's weird that Sharon is old and stuff. But, uh, yeah, and then it goes into, like, this promise that he made with the girl, with the the – uh, with the, the the cosmic cube and like and the part of that and stuff this this deal he made and stuff so it's it's interesting this dark secret that he may have that's the, was the most intriguing thing of this whole book because the rest really was just felt like a repeat of the first one and I felt unneeded I was like I'm ready to jump into it you don't need a more rehash of the first issue I got all this stuff from the first issue I didn't need it again. So the only thing that was really fresh, I mean, it looked phenomenal the whole way through, no doubt. I mean, it's eye candy. It looks amazing, you know, but just the 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 tone, the exchange, it already been done. You already covered those grounds in the first issue. Last part, though, was the most interesting part. So that being said, for me, I want to give it a strong buy. I really do, but I don't feel like it quite deserves it because it just feels like it's retreading, but that ending part is so totally worth it. So it's, it's definitely still, uh, it's definitely still a, uh, I'm just going to say strong buy. I don't care, but it might be a T it's teetering on. It's almost a buy. All right. And the digital code, it's really hard to read. So I'm just going to post it probably on Instagram and see if anybody can decipher it. Maybe on Facebook or Twitter um, but yeah, I mean, if I post it on Instagram, it's going to show up on our Twitter. And then if I post it on Facebook, it's going to show up on our Twitter as well. So either way, look out on Twitter. So yeah. Yeah. Now on to Adventures of the Super Sons. Number one, this does have a digital code. Uh, it is Peter J. Tomasi and... As story and words, Carlo Barbari as pencils, Art Thibbert as inks, Proto Bunker as colors, Rob Lay as letters. This is the return of the Super Sons, and someone is controlling the bronze statue of Superman to attack Damien, and Superboy is just like screwing around, and Damien's getting pissed, like, you should help me. So they trade out, and you know, Superboy is now the distraction, uh, and then. Damien starts messing with him. He finds out that somebody's controlling him and stuff, controlling that statue and stuff like that. So that's really cool. And, uh, you know, they get out of school. And it's I love how different they are. It's so great, and they work just because they're polar opposites. It's it's really good. And then there's this person who is kind of looks like uh, uh what do they call it? Like, not a Yeti, but, you know, the – yeah. Um, so, yeah, and then attacks and, uh, them. And then there's, like, this – the gang that's like the legion of evil gang or or it's all the kids but it's like from an alternate dimension or something like that so it's cheesy i don't know i'm kind of like i don't i it's you know i don't know it, it kind of feels at this point it almost feels like too much like a kid's book but it's still enjoyable so it that's not entirely a bad thing it looks really good and it's funny and it's enjoyable i, I like it so I feel like it's still worth a strong buy, and I'll go ahead and even give the digital code away. Here's it's DC for Detective Comics, another C for comics, and uh, one seven H for Hell, N for negative, Y for yellow, S for super, seven S for super, Y for yellow, and L for Lobo. Cool. Yeah, let's get into Astonishing X-Men number 14 because it is Rithu, Rithu Matthew, uh, Rosenberg is the writer, uh, math, uh, penciler is Greg Land, I can't talk, inker, Jay Leaston, color artist, Frank the Armata, Clayton Cowles as letter, and I don't remember this, but Banshee all of a sudden is back, uh, not entirely himself though, and attacks these Reavers. Uh, along with Warpath, who is all of a sudden there as well, uh, which I love Warpath, so that's good with me. And then they go to 
Piotr Rasputin, right? Um, and he's drunk because of his current situation or, or recent situation. And then they go to Dazzler and they don't go to recruiter and she's kind of bugged by that. They just need her help because Forge is working with her, you know, and, but then these people attack them and she's actually saves their butts. And she's like, all right, you're going to be on, let me be on this team of all dudes sausage party over here. And she's sporting the old look and stuff. It's, it's legit. It's cool. It's funny. It's nice. And, uh, but then they're like, ah, people, we, we probably shouldn't attack those guys. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's it's cool. I like it. I feel like the voicing is good. I, I like the – when I hear Beast, I hear the Beast from the show, you know. And Havoc, he, I don't think he was on the show. Well, I think, yeah, he was on like a few episodes, Havoc was. I don't know about Dazzler, uh, but what I'm saying is that I didn't hear their voices just because they, they weren't in there that much. But like – Everybody else was really – everybody was really well done. I would say the characterization for everyone was top-notch, and it looked absolutely phenomenal. It was a really fun book. It's enjoyable. You know, I like it. It's interesting. It's intriguing. So I'm going to keep reading it for now. So it's a strong buy. And here's the digital code. 9, 3, 6, A for Alpha, 7, S for Super, Q for Quasar, 9, U for Ugly, 0, 6, X for X-Men. Let's move on to Go Go Power Rangers number 12, I want to say, but I don't know if that's right. Uh, written by Ryan Parrott, illustrated by Dan Mora, colored by Raul Anjulo, letters by Ed Dukeshire. And so it is kind of, I think they kind of have like this, yeah, they have this backstory of this pink ranger attacking Tommy and how she becomes controlled by him. And... Then you see present her, and she seems like she's gone dark again, but she actually hasn't. She has her own plan in mind. And then she has a Zord that she made from, like, broken pieces of Zord, and that teams up with the, the Mega Zord and makes, like, this Ultra Zord that because it's facing on two enemies that it was getting his butts kicked. Mega Grave Zord. Uh, yeah, it's pretty wicked. It looks really epic. It looks really awesome. Uh, and then she does something that undoes or or kind of secures Tommy's life, but I don't know if it's this timeline or the timeline where his life was taken that's messed up all the timelines. So it's really interesting. It's really intriguing, but she does jump around in this timeline. So really cool, really awesome, really interesting. I like how they've created an all-new Power Rangers, Go-Go Power Rangers timeline that is different to create new and unique and different stories to be told. And not just kind of like expand on the mythos or whatever. So, yeah, it's really cool. It's really, I like it a lot. It's really interesting. Uh, and the ending is sad. The ending is sad. So, Strong Buy, Contender, really, really solid book. Strongly suggest Go Go Power Rangers. Uh, yeah, for sure. Next is The Immortal Hulk, number four. It is still Al Ewing writing it. Um, art is Joe Bonet, uh, then Rui Jose, I believe is inks and then Paul Mounts as colors. And we have this guy and he's Sasquatch. Yes. That's the word that I was thinking before. He's Sasquatch and he used to be partners with, well, not partners, but he used to work with Bruce and he transformed himself into Sasquatch and he's with this reporter he's telling this story to and it's really cool how the art is one way they, they're going they're looking for bruce and you get the story and then these two guys are acting crazy they attack him well he hasn't been able to turn into sasquatch i think and they actually attack him and he dies and bruce shows up and that's really cool and bruce talks to her and he's like oh crap this is me maybe what happening because this is what hap is happening to me so it is really interesting. I love how this story has been building up to this. I can't wait to see the next issue. It's going to be wicked. And this has been such a great build and a perfect build because I'm not like, come on, I want you know something to happen already. No, like it's there's some something happens every issue 
and it's just been a great slow build. I love it, and I can't wait to see the next issue. I'm definitely hooked on this book now. I am officially hooked on it. So, strong buy, contender, faux show. Here is the digital code. F for Famicom, C for Cable, M for Mankey, Zero, G for Garbodon, D for Decagon, M for Megatron, M for Megatron, V for Vector, S for Senior, F for Famicom. All right, cool. I'm going to review Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Universe number 29. 25, actually. It's $4.99. And this one is just one story. It's Spirit Walk. Writer is Ian Flynn. Artist, Nelson Daniel. Letter, Sean Lee. Oh, this one's so cool. So we have Leo, and he's doing his meditation. He goes into the astral plane, and he wants to do more training in the astral plane because that's how he's been fighting the Rat King, and they mention that. Oh, so cool. And so... I uh, I love this astral plane. I love I really it's really cool how he looks without his stuff too. But then he kind of shows his his colors in a way. And then there's like this creature of the astral plane that communicates with him and stuff, which is really interesting because he's got kind of like a fat chipmunk or something like that. I don't know some creature. And then like um, this evil one of the evil gods, she comes in and then she messes with his head by having this. It's kind of like Splinter, but Shredder combined to attack Leo, and Leo starts, he's like, oh, this is pretty much all in my head, so I am I can be faster, I'm faster than I think I am, and I, I can get away, you know, and do all these things that I can do before, but he wakes up, he gets out, he's pretty wasted because of all this, and then it's just talking about, like, how supportive his brothers are of him, and they're like, you know, hey, man, what was going on, you know, he looks wasted and stuff, and uh, they're like, here's some pizza, you know, and relax and play some video games, you know, and then just, you know, so like, okay, just watch us play video games then, it's, it's, I just love the family dynamic, and I love, this is the way that they should be doing the universe books, but at the end, I think it says, at the end, it says, the I think it might say the end actually at at it. It says thanks for exploring the universe with us. And that scares me that this is over because I really have enjoyed these and I love how they can do these expanding things. But maybe it, it became to the point where it was too much for them and it was hard for them to maintain. I don't know. But uh, I would be interested to find out. It's a strong buy. It's definitely a contender for sure. It looks beautiful and it was really, really great. So strong buy and contender. <laughs> Next is, damn. Uh, <laughs> next is Infinity Wars number one, and I. It is uh, Gary Dugan, Jerry Dugan, one of those. Um, Mike Diodato's artist, Frank Martin as colors, and so it is Gamora, and she's like, "Hey, give me the stone," and the guys are like, "We're not gonna give you the stone, you know. Uh, we're gonna go to this Infinity." watch and meet up with all the other people that have infinity stones um Corey petite is, is the letter and so that's what's happening is you find out like there's a villain that has one and so he invites other villains with him you know and then of course warlock you know sets up all these heroes you know as backup and then there's the guardians and dr strange and then the person who killed thanos shows up and then she, she it appears that she killed somebody else it's really crazy. It's really awesome. I love Mike Diodato's art. It's really nuts how this turns out because you have all these people that are really paranoid. And there's also something going on with Loki's. He finds this alternate universe Loki that is essentially just Thor, but Loki. Um, and he has the Infinity Gauntlets or Infinity Stones or something. So it's really interesting because these villains are like they're they're all they're all ready to pop off and take out these heroes because they want to get all the stones for themselves. Uh, but somebody else does too. So it's just this. I'm. This is another one. You're shaking it, and I like that. I like that. But when you shake it too much, though, what are you gonna do when you want these people written back in? You then you just write them back in, and it's lazy, you know. So we'll see how it turns out. I'm interested to see how it turns out. If there's some sort of trick to this, you know, 
uh, but I'm liking it a lot so far. So it's definitely a strong buy. It's definitely a contender. It looks phenomenal. It's really, really great. In fact, I'm going to hold on to this digital code until the end. Next is It's Rising, Miss Marvel and Squirrel Girl number one, or Marvel Rising. Anyways, this has kind of been going on for a while, but they keep on tightening it and num as number ones, and it's really confusing. This is part three, though. Uh, G. Will Wilson covers Miss Marvel. Ryan North covers Squirrel Girl uh, with Devin Grayson as writers. And then R Ramon Box does Miss Marvel, and Irene Strzchowski does Squirrel Girl. And then Rico Renzi uh, and then Rachel Rosenberg as the colorist. Clayton Cowles as the letter. And so essentially they're just like stuck in the zombie video game. Uh, this one girl kind of, she tries to cheat. And then so she, well, not cheat, but she uses her portals. And they're like, oh, that's cheating. You know, that's not in the game parameters. So she kind of gets blocked out. Uh, America does. And then they get thrown into this MMORPG. And they're like, oh, we're going to level up. You know, Ms. Marvel, she's played them. So she knows those things. But they're just stuck in there. And then this other girl, she's getting played by this other person. So... Um, and this person's like controlling and they're like, I've never even met you. How can I trust you to like, just go into this thing that's going to give me power and stuff. And it's like, all right, fine. You don't want to do it. Well, if you don't do it, then these people are going to die that you just did. And then it's, that their blood is on your hands essentially because you've killed them and stuff. So, uh, they, I think they find a way out. Um, and they find out who the bad guy is and, uh, but it's, I don't think, yeah, it's not over. There's still one more issue. Um, in Omega, that's the name of it. Omega is the last issue. So it's fun. I like it just because it incorporates video games and I love video games. So you're, you're combining like two of my favorite things pretty much, which is comics and video games. And that's great. I love the humor and I love the way they integrate it. It works out really well. So and it looks really good and it's really funny. And it's really cute. It's great. So I can give it a strong buy and I can even give it a contender. I will give the digital code away though. Here it is. F for Familia, 6, O for Oscar, E for Iluterio, 6, 1, and for Marcos, Q for Quintana, and for Novela, U for Uganda, Z for Zorro, and for Novela. All righty. That's that. Now it's time for me to get into a commercial break. So I'm going to go into the commercial break. And actually, no, it's not time for commercial break. It's time for me to announce my back and back and run her up. What am I talking about? I'm tired. And I'm stupid. Uh, anyways, like I said, we talked about I'm slow up here. So, yeah, I there's a lot of great stuff. Man, I would love to just pick Captain America just because I love Captain America so much, right? Uh, but I can't because of the way things went. Uh, so what I'm going to have to go with is I'm definitely going to have to go with I know what my B-Bow is right away. And you should know what my B-Bow is too. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, of course. Just Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's so freaking great. I love it. I love it. Universe number twenty-five. So good. I just, I just, I just love the Ninja Turtles. I love the way they worked it, the astral plane and stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I like. I really enjoyed how they did that stuff. Uh, it really blew me away. Oh man! But when it comes down to it. I, you know, I think I'm just going to have to settle on Infinity Wars as my runner-up because it's crazy. It's so intense. It's so good. It's so interesting. It looks phenomenal. The art just blows me away. And spoiler alert, here I'm going to spoil it. Star-Lord gets stabbed by Gamora, and Gamora is the one who sliced off Thanos' head, and she used the Power Stone that she stole from the Guardians to do it. Pretty wicked. Pretty wicked. I thought it was Nebula. To be honest, I thought it was Nebula. So, really cool. It's the other daughter. Uh, they threw me for a loop on that one. I can't wait to see if she gets all the stones and what she would do. She Really, she just wants the soul stone. That's really all she wants. But the soul stone is corrupted. So, I say just give her the stone. But go like, hey, we'll trade you stones. But I don't think that she's going to go that way. But yeah, it's interesting. I like it a lot. Like I said, it's my runner-up. Here's a digital code. F for Fantastic, C for Cable, M for Marvel, S for She-Hulk, H for Hulk, C for Cable, T for Thomas, A for Alpha, J for Jack, X for X-Men, L for Logan, N for Nova. 
And that's it for the week. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Tell me what you think of the books that I gave away, as well as the books that I didn't give away, if you have read them, uh, and anything like that. So you can check out all of our stuff at TNTM The Show, which is our Facebook, our Twitter, our Instagram, our Tumblr, our website, our YouTube, everything. That's where it's at. Like I said, if you share this podcast, I'll give you a free digital code of the codes that I still have. Um, and then anything, you know, and, and other stuff like that. So, yeah, uh, that's it for now. So keep your eyes hungry for comics.